Today I want to talk about traveling safely internationally when you have kids with food allergies. Um, so I know that food allergies is like an issue that is becoming more prevalent and a lot of families are trying to navigate that challenge in a world that hasn't really caught up to our needs yet. And so um, that can make it really challenging and hard to feel like you can live your fullest, best possible life um, and keep your kids safe in the process. And so um, we recently went on a trip. This is our second international trip, I think within the last two years. And so I have a couple of ideas that I wanna share that um, were helpful to me and um, might just kind of get you guys thinking. And so, um, yeah, I just wanna share some ideas. So if you're thinking about traveling, you feel like you can do so with confidence. And I will tell you, it takes a little extra planning, a little extra preparation, but um, I feel more and more optimistic and more, and more confident than it, that it can be done. And I feel like, you know, this is something that's on your heart to do is to give your kids these experiences, um, help build their confidence themselves. Um, I think that it's important for us to navigate as parents um, so that we can pass those skills down to our kids because one day, you know, they're gonna grow, they're gonna leave the house and they need to be able to navigate those situations as well. And I think that it's important to instill in them their capabilities um, and instill in them that it's possible to, you know, live a full life, you know, with these challenges. So um, these are a couple of things that I thought about as I was planning our last trips. Um, and more specifically, like, what do you do when there's a lot of unknowns, right? Because I think it's easy to make a trip when everything kind of lines up, you have all the meals laid out. Um, but one thing that I found is when you travel internationally, you have to be careful about like taking cooked food with you, taking meat and things like that with you. Um, some countries have like regulations about that kind of stuff. And then, you know, if you're going to a place you've never been to before, you've never seen, um, sometimes they might not, it might, you might not have a clear vision of what to expect when you get there. So it almost feels like, can I guarantee, how can I guarantee that my kids will have like safe meals? Um, so that's what I want to talk about specifically, like how to prepare and still take that risk, still take that trip, still live your life when all the pieces are not put together as I know a lot of us would prefer. So the first thing that I did was make sure to have all of our emergency medicine together because um, there's a likelihood that you may experience a reaction, especially if you're you typically provide your kids with home cooked meals and they're not going to have that for some part of the trip so make sure all of your medicine is together um before our trip we actually took a trip the previous week like a small like trip within the state and i thought i had all of our emergency medicine and i'm so grateful that i took that small trip because um i realized i forgot something really important which was the spacer or an inhaler that my kids take and so i'm like you know trying to imagine like taking a trip very far away from home and not having something like so small but so essential so i would recommend ahead of time just really writing a detailed list of everything that you might need emergency medicine wise um and make sure that you go through that checklist and just really don't be laid back when it comes to that part of it because i think that's the most important thing okay um just in general yeah just be safe when it comes to that um especially when it comes to handling mild reactions that have the potential to grow but if you can like get a control on it because you're prepared uh that's good um, the next thing that we did since we were going into a situation where there were a lot of unknowns is we brought a lot of pantry items um i have found that a lot of places they seem to be okay for bringing dry goods so crackers they'll be there for us chips um things like that so we brought a lot of snacks but then i also bought brought pantry items as well um for us we have like a pasta that uh, it's not very easy to find pasta without eggs. So we have a pasta that's tried and true that we love. I brought that just in case that became handy um, and other like little shelf stable pantry items that just in case I needed to cook. And I know that it's hard to find this an allergy friendly version. I wanted to make sure that we have that. I read stories of parents taking trips and getting their kids something as simple as ketchup and finding out that the ketchup had an ingredient in there that they weren't expecting and that ketchup making the child really, really sick. Um, and so it kind of like threw a huge wrench in their vacation. So I don't, I don't want anything like that to happen. Um, so if there's anything that I can do, all right so sorry about that but moving along a uh, part of our strategy when we're going into the unknown is preparing a little bit of cooked food now i know i just told you in the last point that a lot of places when you read their rules about what's allowed into their country a lot of places don't want um you to bring you know cooked food and meat and things like that um however for the couple of trips that i've taken especially if you're coming with children even if you identify that i have food which we have and we do every time um it seems like the couple times that we've done it, nobody really cared. So just you can use that information how you want. Um, and so both trips, we brought a little bit, mainly for the journey and the airplane ride, um, fully expecting that when we got there that they would throw the food away. Um, on the first trip, when I realized that that actually wasn't the case, then for this trip, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna pack a little bit more just in case we need it as we're like, you know, transitioning, figuring out our way. And um, once again, they allowed us to bring it in. That first night when we were just kind of getting there, getting settled, I was able to kind of warm that up and provide that to my kids. So it did take the pressure off of like immediately having to find something for the kids to eat. Um, the next thing that is really helpful is having a portable, a portable kitchen. So um, 
for this trip, we have this little cooktop that we use. So I packed that in one of our suitcases that we like checked in along with like a, a small pot and a couple of utensils. So I was fully prepared if needed to go get fresh ingredients from the store, even if all I could do was dice up fruit and make some protein for the kids. Um, and then as mentioned, I brought a lot of shelf stable items like the pasta, pasta sauce, things like that, that I knew that my kids could have. So at minimum, I knew that I would be able to cook something. Oh no, that was another pantry item that we brought if it came to that. So that was kind of like my fail safe plan. Obviously, um, ideally I wouldn't have to go on vacation and cook, but if I have to, I just wanted to make sure that that was an option. So we have the little cooktop. They even have these um, pots that are called hot pots and you plug them in and you can use them like a regular pot, but they're powered by electricity. The only thing you just want to double check is that the power source in the country that you're visiting makes sense for the like plug that you have. Um, and if you need to do converters and all that stuff, we haven't had a trip where I've needed to do that yet. Um, but just something to think about. Um, for shorter trips and so not international, um, we've even brought our air fryer with us so we can have like crunchy chicken nuggets. I've noticed that, you know, like in the place that we just went to, they didn't even have like a microwave available, but when possible, I ask if that's something that's possible for us to have access to. So um, not all hotels provide microwaves, but that's just something to be aware of is if they do or not. Um, so just thinking about like if I need to cook, what is available for me to be able to do that. And then lastly, we were in a resort and I um, feel very fortunate that uh, the kids were able to eat a lot of the food that was at the resort and so we don't have a lot of experience with restaurants we're just kind of inching into that direction and so the biggest tip that i have is just talk to the chef um luckily where we were uh they were very in tune and responsive when it came to food allergies um they were able to point out like what was okay for the kids to have versus what they were unsure about or just blatantly wasn't okay and so um overall we chose to stick with like very clean eating so every meal i would just go it was like buffet style for most of the places that we went to we did go to a few restaurants where they cooked and brought it out from the back but for the most part, we brought them like a platter of fruit that they could eat from um, and then some type of protein. They had like grilled chicken, grilled beef and grilled different cuts, assortments of meat. And they didn't cook them in butter or anything. It was just oil. So um, that would be like the foundation of the meal. And then if they had things that they felt were pretty clean and not likely to be contaminated, like fries or potatoes or rice, um, you know, we would then provide that as a carb source. And we kept it super simple, super clean. Um, we didn't do like a ton of experimentation. And that worked for us. Not perfectly. We did have a couple... Um, Okay, so I lost my train of thought. So, oh, I was just saying that, yeah, sometimes there would be things that we were told were okay, but would be cross-contaminated. For example, someone used the tong to get something that, you know, wasn't it wasn't intended for and then grab something later that I thought was safe. Obviously, there would be cross-contamination. Fortunately for us, most of our reactions were able to be controlled, um, you know, with the emergency medicine that we had from home. I had a backpack, a little mini backpack that I carried throughout the duration of the trip, especially when we were eating. And we just tried to control and suppress things as quickly as possible. Um, and that ended up working out for us. Um, one thing that I'll add in my arsenal for the future is like, what is that emergency plan, right? Like if things don't, are not easily controlled, um, kind of like having that plan in the back of my head, like, you know, this is how we're gonna make it from point A to B. Um, so, but yeah, luckily that worked out for us. So anyway, I just wanted to share that because I know like I said it's, it's a growing issue and this is something that I almost have decided to not partake in trips, not partake in experiences because I wasn't clear like how to navigate it safely. There wasn't like a lot of information or people sharing their experiences. And so it's really required me to um, just kind of grab the bull by the horns and hope for the best because I don't want to establish a victim mentality in my kids and like, oh, I can't do this. I want you to be like, yes, and we're gonna figure it out. And so like I mentioned, it really starts with us as parents. So um, this is what I would recommend. If you have any questions about, I know that those are very like overarching topics, but if you have any questions about the specifics, um, definitely feel free to message me and let me know and I can do some follow-ups to this if that's something that you guys would like to talk about more. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.